Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to make a video about some essentials to pack when moving abroad or teaching abroad, leaving the country. Um, some things that I think that you should definitely have on your list. So first, if you didn't watch my first video, I'm from New York and I live in the Dominican Republic. I taught in a smaller city for one year and now I live in Santiago, which is the second biggest city in the country. When I came, I had one massive suitcase that I checked, um, literally enormous, and then one backpack, carry on like a big backpack, I'll show you, and then a smaller normal school backpack and that's it. I was pretty proud of myself because I overpack like crazy, even for a weekend away. But this, it's actually not that impressive because my big suitcase weighed 86 pounds. So I'm sure that you can do much better than me and kind of cut things down. This is going to be a little bit based on if you're teaching abroad, but still hopefully it's helpful to everyone kind of leaving their country and going to a new one. First, I would recommend a good camera, but that's only if you're going to use it. So. Before I came, I bought my brother's old Canon Rebel like one. I planned on using it in all like weekend trips and things like that, but I just ended up using my GoPro and my cell phone. When I just came back this time, I was home in, in the beginning of July, I got a Sony Alpha A6000, so I have that with me now. And it is pretty small and compact, so that's not a big deal. Okay, next, I'll talk about clothes now. Obviously, it depends where you're going to be. How do I explain it? How do I say that? It depends what region you're going to teach in to decide what clothes you're going to bring. I think that makes sense. So I'm in the Dominican Republic and it's tropical weather here. Basically, there's two seasons, rainy season and humid, hot. This is why my hair looks like this pretty much every day and I'm always sweating, so it's fun. But if you're teaching somewhere cold, obviously you're going to need different clothes. But for this region, hot weather, um, the essentials that I would bring, a pair of flip-flops, and I actually don't have this, like just a regular normal pair of flip-flops. I would rather just have like a, an easier slip-on one to wear around the house. Dominicans always wear shoes in the house, like flip-flops at least like sandals and I don't um so I would like to have something like that also a raincoat so I got this before I came um probably from Amazon or something yeah and um I don't use it all the time here in Santiago but when I lived in the other city up in the mountains it rained a lot and I didn't have a car then so I was walking all the time, walking to town, to the grocery store, to school, to the bank, everywhere. So a raincoat and a mini umbrella, you don't wanna take a lot of space up in your suitcase. So a big umbrella doesn't really make sense, but a smaller one, if you're in a region where it rains a lot, is good. Like a sturdy small one, because if you have to keep buying new ones because they break, that's just gonna be a waste of your money, but definitely useful to have an umbrella. Also with clothes, something I found really helpful was to bring a scarf. This scarf is stuck on everything. Okay, so is that a hole? <laughs> I'm a mess. It's super lightweight. I have a black one too that's a little thicker, but these are like because you can wear them or you can, ha I bring them to the beach like as a towel, as a cover up. The scarf is really versatile and I would recommend one. It Just one, I don't, use, I don't need two, just one. Um, something like this I really like because it's just like a small cover-up and it's super lightweight also so I can bring that with me and, and I can dress it up too I'm just throwing everything on my couch it's gonna stay there for a week if you are teaching abroad I would definitely find out what the dress code is at your school and it changed a little bit once I got there but it was super helpful because I went out and was able to buy things that fit the dress code. We couldn't wear jeans except on Fridays, so I had khakis and like dress pants and like black skinny jeans that I pretended were dress pants. That was really helpful because I have never bought pants here. The sizes are a mess. Jeans are more expensive here than at home in the States, I feel like, um, and just mm, kind of lower quality. 
So I went to Old Navy before I came and I got everything on sale and I had clothes for the year so that worked out and then I bought too many. So I would only say like two, three pairs of pants that you need for school. Just take up so much room in your suitcase. And for the tops on Fridays, we had a uniform shirt, but on Fridays we could wear whatever we wanted. So I would recommend really lightweight, flowy things. The linen tops uh, that are super lightweight, that wrinkle really easily, those ones. Those are great because it was so hot at school. Um, there was no air conditioning, so it was just, <laughs> it was so hot. So anything lightweight that's small, that's why I love those shirts because they're so small. They, I fit like a million in my bag. In terms of shoes, I would bring as little as possible because they take up so much room. Like bring something that you can use in both situations. I would recommend a pair of gym shoes or like running shoes, sneakers, like that you can get dirty or do activities in. A pair of cute sneakers. I brought down Toms but then I like never wore them. Um, I don't know why. So whatever you think is comfortable that you can wear kind of every day. I have a few pairs of sandals, one pair of heels, my soccer shoes and my gym shoes, and that's it. Oh, on shoes, make sure they're comfortable. I did so much walking and I realized the shoes that I thought were super comfortable were not. And when you're teaching, you're on your feet all the time, all day. So get a pair of sandals or closed toed shoes like we had to wear at school that are comfortable that will last when you're wearing them all the time this is kind of a clothing item um a microfiber towel i think is super handy i got this on amazon it's full size it's huge when you take it out but it's super thin and it dries really really fast which is great here because it's so humid that nothing dries and i don't have a dryer most people here don't have dryers so everything gets hung outside so having something like that is great for sleeping because like i said on the weekends you might be traveling going to the beach going to the mountains traveling the country that you're in if you're staying at hostels on the way you don't know who you're going to be sleeping next to so i would bring um earplugs even like my old house was so loud with motorcycles and like cows and chickens all night that um earplugs are great and then an eye mat like sleeping mask if you're in a hostel or something um the sleeping mask can be great i have brought these headphones because i used them a lot right when i came here when i was traveling more around the country and didn't have a car and was on the bus and stuff these were really helpful i mean i just love them for the plane if nothing else but a good pair of headphones I would definitely invest in. I have like the iPhone headphones too. I would bring a couple pairs of those because they're more expensive here if you lose them or if they break. In terms of like toiletries and stuff like that, I wouldn't bring too many. I brought like one bottle of shampoo and conditioner that I use and soap, but that is pretty basic stuff unless you need a special brand specifically. I would bring that from home. This is something that I, every time I go home, I get more of. My contact solution, this is like the brand that I need to get. They don't sell that here, Just they just have the basic one and it's expensive, so I mean this is too. But I need this brand, so even though those are heavy and take up a lot of weight and you have to check them vitamins anything that you don't know if they'll have when you get there and you take every day i would bring i brought bug spray like super this is like 100 percent deep which is so dangerous but there are so many bugs here i would bring bug spray if you're going to a place that you haven't been before or you're not acclimated to because when i first got here i got so many bug bites i also brought a bunch of these emergencies because i thought i was gonna get sick way more um i haven't but if you catch a lot of colds and if you're traveling a lot staying in hostels going to new places i would bring these they're pretty cheap at like cvs walgreens i brought a couple of these candles because um because i like candles and when they're finished like when they burn out i have another i took the wax out and i just put like rings bracelets necklaces q-tips like small little things in here and then it's easier to travel with just a couple more things for toiletries this was super helpful for me it's like a it's like the deep cleaning makeup brush or like face 
face cleaner. I, I don't even know any vocabulary. I got this so cheap at TJ Maxx. So I like that because since it is so humid here, I'm washing my face all the time. And this is like a deep clean. Tissues, I brought a bunch of these because, well first everyone needs tissues, but also a lot of, depending where you're going, this might be the same situation. A lot of the public bathrooms don't have toilet paper in them. So especially at like bus stops and like little, tiny little restaurants on the street and department stores, places like that, they don't always have toilet paper. So that was helpful for me. You don't wanna be in like that situation, especially if it's an emergency. So I would bring some of those. And then razors I brought from home because they're expensive here, like very expensive. Brought a bunch of these. Every time I go home, I bring a few more. Okay, in terms of technology things, besides the camera, I brought my computer and with my computer, I brought a charger and then a backup charger just in case. Um, and then I have the new Mac that needs like a million and one adapters, design flaw. So any adapters that you might need, get them at home, <laughs> bring them because you might not find them where you're going. My mom just got me this when I was home last time and it's great. This is an iPhone charger that's 10 feet, I think. And it's just the two prong one. So I love this. I didn't know how much I would like this. It's, I love it. Check where you're going. I know some places in Asia and whatnot, they have different outlets. Uh, here, they're exactly the same, like two prong and then sometimes three, but other places you might need to get an adapter. So make sure you have enough and they can like withhold the voltage of like your hair dryer. Uh, for the phone, I have the iPhone X and it's through Sprint. Switch to the One World International plan, something like that. So I can text and use data here. Calls cost money, but I use WhatsApp, so that's fine. But before you come, if you don't have a phone that has an international plan that you can switch to, make sure your phone's unlocked and then you can just get a SIM card here and put it in and use minutes. Last thing I have for technology that I love is my Kindle. So useful. I've loved this um, to use whenever. Obviously books take up a lot of space so I didn't bring any when I came and it's pretty hard to find books here. Might be the same for the country you're going to. There's just not a lot of like libraries or bookstores so the Kindle has been great uh, for me and if you can hook it up to a library card then you'll get um, books for free or, or cheaper than the Kindle store. I have this that I put, Dominican Republic, um, I have this that I put all of my like documents in. My passport, copies of my passport, important documents, like stuff about my car. I put them in something like that and hide it so I always know where everything important is and you shouldn't be carrying around your passport on the street anyway. You have copies of passports for that. The water bottle is so important. I love this water bottle so much. I've gone through three water bottles in a year, all that I brought from the States. Um, and this one's the best one yet. First of all, because of the color. Also, it keeps, this is one of like the aluminum ones. It keeps cold things cold for 24 hours. And then it keeps things hot for 12 hours. It's just awesome, I love this and it stays secure like tight my old one would leak all the time water bottle doesn't sound that exciting but here you cannot drink water from the faucet so the water is super super contaminated so i can't just like take a glass of water from the kitchen sink the bathroom sink um in restaurants everything's bottled so when i go out i bring my water a lot or at the gym bring a water bottle this i love i got this at forever 21 for like seven eight dollars and I don't have any other purse besides this. I'm not really big into big purses, but this is awesome. It's small enough that I can take it everywhere, but it's, it's big enough to fit things that I need to. It fits my phone, my passport, get a small bag like that. Oh, and um, if you're gonna be like savvy, put it on crossbody like this, because if you're walking on the street and you just have it, uh, like this, anyone can just like come by and grab it and steal it. Here in Santiago, it's common for people to drive by on their motorcycles and just like take it. And also something that zips, so you don't want a bag that just uh, like snaps shut or doesn't close. 
get something that zips so someone behind you or next to you doesn't open or can take anything out of that super easily. This bag is the big one that I brought when I moved here. This was, I had so much stuff in here. This is like a hiking backpack. Um, I really like this one. I bring this when I go away on the weekend uh, when I need a little bit more things than my small backpack. It has different compartments, towel spots. It's just like super supportive. So you can go hiking with it whatever kind of adventure you wanna do, I would recommend having a sturdy, comfortable backpack like that, that you can take anywhere and fit anything into. That's pretty much it. Um, just one more thing that I forgot is medicine. If you have any medicines that you wanna stock up on, kind of like the same thing with vitamins, get them in the States, bring them here, have extra prescriptions. Um, if it's a medicine that you really need that type of, that exact, brand just had the doctor make a prescription for longer and usually they're fine doing that if you tell them that you're moving to another country and they won't have the medicine that you need definitely definitely take the time to figure out the medication aspect before the cool thing here is like there's a pharmacy right there i can see it and i can go in there and get a lot of medicine without a prescription but it's different brands and i don't know all the side effects and all of that so i actually i got a couple prescriptions for just in case things. Okay, so that's pretty much it for my packing list. Don't bring as many clothes as you think or that you want to. You don't really need that many. You don't wanna be carrying around so many things, like lugging them from one place to another. It just weighs you down, literally. I just didn't need as many clothes as I thought that I did. Leave more room for the most necessary things. So if you have any questions or if you have anything that I'm forgetting because I had 100 pounds of things when I came here. Comment below because that might help somebody else. Put something that you brought when you moved abroad that was super, oh, I remember, see? Comfort food. Um, if there's anything like food-wise from the States that you love, bring some of them. Like candy, I don't know, like pretzels they don't really have here. Peanuts, nuts are super expensive. Gummies, I love gummies. I always bring the Haribo ones back just to save money and then they might not have it at all. So bring some comfort food, just a couple things that you love from home. But if there's anything else that I forgot, comment below and let me know, let everyone else know. If you like this video, if it was helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more videos about living abroad, teaching abroad, anything related to living in another country, hit subscribe and thanks for watching my second video. Bye.